actually know what's going on here. I literally have no idea. Help. <laughs> We're, We're 20 whatever. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Hello and welcome back to 20 whatever. Woohoo. Here we go. This is the first episode that we're filming after the launch. Yeah. So the first ones we filmed and we're like, oh, my God, we love it. But like, we don't know how it's going to be received. Right. And so now, like, I feel like I have a whole new confidence sitting down because I'm like, everyone was so sweet and supportive and like encouraging. I'm like, we we're doing the thing. Yeah. I wanted to get back after the first like after launching the first episode and come back and be like, okay, guys. We did it. We did it. <laughs> we did it. We were in the group chat like, you guys are freaking out. We did it. We launched. We launched. It's happening. I know. I'm so happy that everyone's loving it so much. Yeah, yeah. So ever since the launch, our lives have never been the same. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we went to Disneyland um, sometime last week, and which obviously like Disneyland is where dreams come true. We all know. <laughs> right? Happiest place on earth. Happiest earth. place on earth. And we're walking around, right? We're, I think we're like taking a break. We're like going to the bathroom, whatever. And all of a sudden we hear, hey, uh, uh, Ryan and Paloma. Hi. Hey, hi. And we like, uh, honestly, I just thought it was somebody we knew. Like, yeah. you know, like whatever. We turn around and it's somebody that we don't know. And it was a viewer of 20 whatever and like all of our channels and everything. And she was like, hey, like I watch your channel. Like th- I-, I saw that you guys were here. I saw you and I like had to run over and come say hi and all this stuff. And we were like. I remember standing there. I kind of, th- I feel like I blacked out. I think, well, well here's the, where the, I still remember so vividly the first sentence she said to me. She was like, hi. And she lit- l- looked at me and she's like, I know you from the internet. And I was like, oh, me racking my brain of like everything. Like, no, and- you don't. I know. I was like, it, it was just, so. It, I was taken aback because For no sure. one has ever been like, I know you from the internet. And I was like, um, and then she said our names and I was like, oh, this person like knows me. Knows yes. Us, yeah. Hi. And yeah, I'm a a listener. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And then Ryan and I are just like looking at each other like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. And she's like, I was just wanted to say hi. And we were like, can we get a picture? Like, I'm yeah. we asked her to take a picture. Can I take a picture with you? Because I couldn't believe I had to tell my mom. Someone recognized me. (laughs) Right. So we got our picture. And it was so sweet. And we talked to we talked to her for about like, I don't know, like 10 minutes. And then, you know, she walked away. And we were standing there like processing everything that had happened. And we were like, okay, that was crazy. But like, OK, day fine. day is made like this is so like, awesome. We love that. Yeah. Not even two minutes later, someone else comes up to us and is like, hey, same thing. We watch we watch your congratulations, work. Viewer, congratulations on, on the-, the launch, like blah, blah, blah. We were like, what is happening? <laughs> like, what is happening right now? And then her boyfriend comes up and is like, do you mind if we can get a picture? I was like, absolutely yeah. anything you want. Literally anything. It was. That's so it was special. Magical. That's yes. so special. When you guys sent me the pictures, I was like, Steven, look at this. Like, it's <laughs> happening for them. And I just, it's so special meeting someone who like, because we're sitting here talking about our lives for like an hour every week. Like, that's a that's a lot of personal content. Yeah. But it can feel like it's just us. Yeah. You know, and you see the numbers, but what does that really mean? And then to meet someone in person who says like, hey, I not only do I know you, but like this has impacted me and I really love this. Oh, when one one of the girls that came up to us talked to, uh, mentioned to me, she was like, "It's I I love watching you, and I feel so uh, seen, like you as a Latina." And she's like, "I listen to you," and, was, and I was just like, "Oh my gosh, yes, yeah. Latina!" <laughs> <laughs> right. It was a really sweet moment, and it felt like it just felt surreal. Surreal because you think like, "Oh, this happens when you reach like a certain amount of like." followers or like you know certain amount like it it feels like numbers right like oh yeah when i'm like doing the thing then people will, but it was like it felt so wholesome also i was like should we be friends yeah like are no, we friends so <laughs> sweet and i think that's something also that caught me off guard was one of them said thank you f- so much for being so nice oh yes that's and i was like thank you for being oh, so girl, nice and we were like you for literally coming up and saying hi like th- just what but do then you- we thought about that afterwards we were like walking around and we were like that is also kind of sad. It is. Yeah. Like you're thanking me for being a nice person. Like that means that either you don't have, you haven't had good experiences meeting mm-hmm. other people or like, or honestly, maybe like the assumption that like influencers or whoever is like not very kind. Yeah. And I, something I try to do whenever I'm like meeting viewers is like you said, just be nice, be kind, ask them about themselves, talk to them, learn their name because I have I have such clear memories of good and bad stage door experiences when I went to meet actors after the show. And like I I remember the things that they did that made me feel like they were being so kind that made me feel seen. And I try to like 
do that as well. Right. Um, because while that is, you know, for someone who this happens to all the time, that's only a couple minutes of their day for the person that's meeting them. Like, that's something that they're going to remember for a long time. Yeah. Right. And so it's like, what can what can you do to make them feel valued and seen? And it's such it's such a cool experience. And I'm so glad that you guys got to have that. It was really crazy. It was the highlight of our day. Yeah. At least personally. No, I just oh, same. I mean, and the fact that we were at Disneyland was like yeah. so ridiculous. You know, and we I mean? really were like, OK, where dreams come true. Yeah. Right. No. This same is so do you awesome. remember um, the first time someone came up to you? I do. Um, and y- y- you will never forget this first time for you because right. I still remember mine. It was in a Sonic drive through. Uh, <laughs> I was driving home from work uh, when I was working at a theater and I stopped at Sonic on the way home to get one of those delicious 69 cent slushies. Yep. Right. And I had maybe 10,000 followers on YouTube. I, I had just really started to pick up a little bit of steam. And the girl at the window was like, hey, you're Sierra. And same thing. I thought we did a show together. We went to high school, played soccer or something. And um, she was like, you know, I, I really love your videos. My, my cousin showed them to me and we watched them together. And I was just blown away. I could not believe it that someone who wasn't like my mom was like, hey, I right. saw your video. <laughs> right. Oh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's special. And it's I mean, I still like it still makes my day when someone comes up to me and you know, I I think I'm really lucky that I'm in a spot where like that happens, you know, from time to time, like maybe once a day if I'm out in public, but it's not like overwhelming. So it is still really special to right. me when I meet someone who's a viewer and that specialness like it doesn't go away. Like every time you meet someone, maybe it won't be the same as the first, the first time, time. Yeah. But it's still like super special. Well, I feel like when that happens, you kind of have that like, OK, like I'm doing I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Like people are really like taking away something good, you know, enough to come up to me and be like, I watch your stuff. I really like you. I'm this and that. I'm like, OK, this is this feels good. Yeah. yeah. Since OK, so since you've had so many experiences, have you had some that were like not so great? Um, not honestly, no, not like actually meeting and talking to someone. The only like odd thing that's ever happened is I remember one time I was at Target and I was very pregnant and I was in pajamas and just like not n- not looking my best, whatever. <laughs> Someone I'm, I'm at the self checkout. I'm like feeling like crap. I'm just getting my stuff and going. Right. And someone took a picture of me and then DM would mm. it to me and was like, is this you? I saw you at the Starbucks che- or at the Target checkout. And I was like, first of all, I was like, I just I, I didn't respond. But I'm, it's like I would have so much rather have that person just come up and we could have a conversation. Mm-hmm. And then also for a long time after that, it made me always kind of like, is some is someone watching me? Right. Like, is a photo going to be taken of me? When I'm not expecting it, because yeah. even though I was in my pajamas and feeling kind of crappy, if someone had come up to me and asked for a photo, I would totally do it. And I would be fine and happy with that because I'm like aware right, of the that, photo being right, taken. Right, right, right. right. Um, but I think that's the only time that I felt kind of like I was not being viewed as like a full person, you know, and I think a lot of the times with really big celebrities, we like when you see videos of people like chasing Justin Bieber down the street, right. like they're not viewing him as like a real person person like a human being right and I feel like I never really have that like my viewers very much view me as like a whole person which is very nice yeah. <laughs> um and that's probably the only time I felt like a little oh this is this is uncomfy yeah 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 no that's weird <laughs> yeah but that was only once so not, R- not rather bad. just come up and say hi because we would love yeah, we're to yeah. Say hi. take a picture it, it, take a picture yeah like. absolutely um but this was kind of like the perfect little kickoff yeah. um, of our topic today, which is about mental health and social media and how do you balance that? Um, and I think there's we have really interesting perspectives on this because I'm someone who's been in the game for a really long time. Ryan, you have to. You're just starting to kind of get into this stage of like being an influencer, doing this as your full time job. And then Paloma, this is all very new for very you. Very new. It feels so new because I I was doing Instagram when it first started, like Mm -hmm. Instagram launched. And I remember I was the one that even like set up the Instagram for the store that I was working for. Like I was all Instagram, everything, and I would upload everything. And then I got to a space where I was like, I think I'm doing too much and I'm not I'm not regulating this properly. So then I kind of like took a step back from social media and then I kind of liked the cleanse. But then when I was meeting people like my friends, they'd be like, Paloma, you like fell off the face of the earth. Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I didn't fall off the face of the earth. I just haven't been posting like my stuff. But I was always getting like, Paloma, you never post like just kind of comments like that. And I was like, 
not feeling left out, but just kind of like, oh my gosh, people forget about you, I guess, if you're not posting, right, like no, if you're not yeah. showing your face every day. And so then I was just like, is it really important? And it just, you know, just going through all of that, like, do I even need it or not? And then I realized that once I started like slowly getting back into it, that I was making more community online, like connecting with friends that I weren't seeing as much or just uh, friends and family from Mexico and or just keeping contact, you know, and that's what I uh, social media really helps us do, which is stay contact, see what's up. And I was like, oh, that's kind of nice that it's helping me do that. And then I started shooting again and started editing again. And then I got the bug and I was like, <laughs> I because I used about five years ago, I would do like travel vlogs and I just like loved editing it. But I forgot you. I think that once you get out of it, you're like, I forgot that creative outlet for me. And so then this recent time doing the Disney vlog, when I started editing it, like I was 10 minutes in and I looked at Ryan and I was like, Ryan, I have missed editing so much. And it's so fun, like just sitting there and editing my video or actually shooting it. It was just something that I was like, this is something that I really want to get back into. And I want to make sure that it's for the right reasons mm -hmm. and that I can also regulate, like not get too much into it. So I actually want to hear from you too. And you specifically, Sierra, like how you manage yeah. to keep it healthy. And you're like, I'm not just scrolling aimlessly and just mm. doing too much and doing it with a positive impact. Yeah, I think that's something I am very much still working on. Uh, <laughs> so if you have any tips, let me know. But I think specifically for like starting out, one thing I see a lot is people burn themselves out really quickly because they get that bug, right? They're like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm going to vlog every day for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And then by like day 15, they're like, I never want to do this again. Right. right. And what if instead they did a vlog, maybe two vlogs a week, and then they rode that wave of that energy for so long. And I think if people are wanting to get in that, like if they're feeling really motivated, right? Yeah. Batch film. You don't have to post every day. Film a bunch when you have all that motivation and then you've got content for a month. Right. And that was helping me with TikTok because you would totally batch it. But I felt like I was like, oh, my goodness, with YouTube, I'm like, I think I felt well, I feel that I have to be doing something spectacular. You know, like, what are they going to find interesting? Like a day in my life? Like, I'm but they will. But they <laughs> That's do. the thing. I'm like, you watch my videos and you live with me and you still watch them. You I know, love her videos. <laughs> you know, what's the craziest thing to me? And I tell I talked about this on like me, like a lot of panels and stuff. I had this realization that people care much more about me doing boring things than me doing exciting things hmm. because it's more relatable. I mm. I had gone on this amazing trip to Europe with my family and I was like, this content is going to kill it because I'm in I'm in London. We're doing right. all these cool things. Then right. We're in Venice. It's like so cool. Those vlogs did pretty well. But then I came home and the first video I did back was a Target haul and that one did way better. And I'm like, why do people want to see me shopping at Target right. more than me in London? Yeah. And it's like, well, because they're probably not going to go to London, but they're probably going to go to Target. Right. right. They're like, okay, what did Sierra get writing that down? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's that you have to decide, I think, if you want to be inspirational or aspirational, right? Inspirational is I'm living a similar life to you. You know, of course, everyone has their differences. But you do a lot of the same things and you can relate to them. Yeah. Aspirational is like, I want to be you. Like, I would love to live this life. Like, right when you follow people who do like luxury hauls and right. like they're flying on a private jet. That's not your life, but it's aspirational. And I think that was kind of my realization of like, OK, I'd rather be inspirational than aspirational. Mm. Right. And that's such a small shift in your mind when you're creating contact. Right. Because you think the first thing to do is something cool and mm -hmm. never before seen, you know. Yeah. but. I guess it really is just something that makes us feel more human and connected. Yeah. yeah. And so. at the end of the day, I think that's why people like YouTube over traditional media, mm -hmm. because there's that lower barrier to entry where there's not a like big media team crafting everything perfectly and making it amazing and exciting. It's one person. Yeah. And or maybe a small team and they're making this and then they're posting it. And it it's there's less of like a veil between the audience and the creator. It right. feels more inclusive than it does exclusive. Yes. Like, I feel like, obviously, celebrities, feel like, that's exclusive. Like, you're not getting in. Like, mm -hmm. that's, you know, big boy playground. <laughs> but, like, YouTubers <laughs> and influencers feel like you could, you know, you could hang with them and you could, like, yeah, kind we're of. friends. Yeah, we're yeah. friends. Yeah. And I think bringing it back to the mental health aspect, that can bring some challenges, too, right? Because people 
like celebrities, but they don't necessarily feel like they're friends. Right. Right. And then with YouTubers, there is more of that like close relationship where they feel like they they know you. Maybe they feel like they, you know, deserve some sort of access to your life right. and your, your personal feelings and beliefs and struggles. And sometimes you want to share that, but sometimes you don't. And I think there can be this pressure of like, I have to share everything yeah. because they're my friends. Right. Right. But you don't share everything with your friends. That's true. So why do you feel the I need? I thought you like- told me everything. <laughs> <laughs> but but honestly, th- I think that that's also a little piece of why what it was kind of hard for me to also get back into social media was because I was off for so long and then I wanted it to be perfect on what I started posting. And I was, I guess, worried of being perceived as not like the cookie cutter, like how I wanted it. And then so like left for mental health reasons because I was like, I'm just doing too much social media. This is not good for me. And then I was gone for too long that for my own, like another piece of mental health. I was like, I don't know if I can come back. What if they judge me? What if they don't like me? Mm. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as we mentioned in our episode uh, before, I can't give those words meaning. And I'm just going to pretend that it's a different language and I can't understand it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, My favorite is uh, what other people think of me is none of my business. I love that that (laughs) Yep. I also love that It's one. so hard, though, to like actually, it's easy to say. It's hard to put in practice. I think especially being a people pleaser, I'm like, I want everyone to like me. But if 100,000 people are watching my video, they're not all going to like me. That's not possible, right? And that's okay. But I think sometimes I catch myself trying to change myself mm-hmm. for those people who are criticizing me. And sometimes criticism is valid, right? Like if I am using language that's not inclusive, if I misspeak, if I do something wrong, like call me out. But the more so the criticism on my my personality, my life, that when I start to change myself to fit all of that, I lose who I am. And I think I started struggling with that, particularly on the vlog, which has been interesting because Vlogging has always been kind of like my safe space. I was literally about to say that. Yeah, and it, it still is. But what I noticed is the comments on the vlog, because it is so personal, um, a lot of the times it's like little nitpicky criticisms of like, you're doing that wrong. You're doing this wrong, especially about parenting. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's about safety, which I understand because right. like if I'm doing something unsafe, like, yeah, let me know. I want my child to be safe. Right. But guidelines differ in every country. So I all the time get comments of like, you can't give your child spinach. What are you doing? And it's like, okay, in Germany, they don't recommend giving spinach before two years, but I don't, I don't live in Germany. Right. right. I can, if I followed every guideline in every country, that's, and also that's kind of ridiculous because people offline aren't expected to hold to that standard. Mm -hmm. Um, But what is so interesting is I noticed that I was starting to anticipate those comments as I was filming Mm, before I even saw it. If I'm like cooking, gardening, talking about my life, talking about parenting, I can hear in the back of my head what I think people might say. And I started feeling like I had to give a disclaimer to everything I did, like literally everything. I have to give a disclaimer. Disclaimer, I am not a specialist. I am not this. I am not that. This is not meant to make anyone feel bad. Da, 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 da. And it got to the point where I was like, why am I giving all these disclaimers? Like, right. either talk about it or don't. Yeah. Right. And so that's kind of where I'm at now of like, I will occasionally give a disclaimer here or there if I feel like it's really necessary. But most of the time, if it's something that I feel like is really going to rile people up, I'd rather just not talk about it than give right. this long ass disclaimer. Right. And if it's something I care about and I know people are going to say something about it anyways, but I don't care. I'm going to talk about it. Do you think that those dis- little disclaimers that you were giving back in the day, like actually were helping or you were no. still getting other? No, it, it brought attention to it to people that didn't notice. Oh. You know, if I said like, you know, something like cooking for grace, I feel like is a good example. Like, oh, I'm I'm doing this for grace. But like some people don't do this, but I do. And da 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 da. Like I did this thing called baby led weaning, mm-hmm. which like our pediatrician recommended it. I felt the need to say that every time before I did it. We're doing I'm feeding this because we're doing baby led weaning because our pediatrician recommended it because the AAP says and it's like, why am I just show the freaking omelet? (laughs) It's really not that big of a deal. Right. But I felt like this pressure of I have to be this like perfect person who everyone likes, who never uh, shows anything that could possibly be misconstrued in any way. 
And it got to the point where I was just like, you know what? This is my life. And I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with these things that I'm doing. But I think a lot of the times with comments, it's easy for me now to like push aside the ones that are like critical of like my appearance or like my body. Like I am so past that, right. you yeah. know, like that used to bother me. And that's 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 here is gone. Like, I don't care. But when they hit things that I'm already insecure about, that's tough. Yeah. Like I am deeply always fearful that I'm not spending enough time with grace. That is like something I think about every day. And I know it's so common for working moms that like they feel they worry that they're missing out on things that they're not there enough. And I get comments that are like, aren't you afraid that you're missing out on Grace's life? Don't you think that you should be with her instead of working? And I am already insecure about that. So that that hits hard. Right. But I have to remember, no one says that to Steven. Right. And I only work three days a week. Steven works five. Right. And I am the breadwinner in our house. But no one suggests that I should keep working and he should quit to not miss out. Right. Mm. Um, and when I think about that, I'm like, oh, this is this is just misogyny. I, said, I, said, yeah. I love some misogyny. <laughs> I think reframing it like that is helpful. But still, when when someone comments about something that you already kind of believe or are fearful of it's it's hard i also feel like the people that want to talk about you are going to talk about you anyway mm -hmm. like the even if you disclaim 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 don't show show whatever like if people want to talk they will yeah and they're going and they are yeah so like it's it's too hard to try to please everyone one because you can't and your haters will continue to be your haters whether mm -hmm. even if you're doing stuff that right. they want you to do mm -hmm. yeah they'll find something mm -hmm. yeah because you know, there, yeah, there's always that little haters. piece that just want to always make sure that you're brought down, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's hard, too, because a lot a lot of those comments actually don't come from haters. They come from people who have like genuine concern. But it's still like kind of it's hard. It's, it can be irritating sometimes. Like I filmed when Kenzie and I were filming at Old Navy. I was doing like a haul and I was filming in the car and there was no child in the back seat, But Grace's car seat was facing forward because it's one that swivels for like easy entry. Oh, and then mm -hmm. you turn it. Um, but in the video, you could see that the car seat was facing forward. I got hundreds and hundreds of comments and messages telling me the dangers of a forward facing car seat, why I need to be careful that it's wrong, that I'm a bad parent. Grace doesn't ride in a forward facing car seat. Right. Right. But and I wasn't even talking about car seats. It was just visible. I understand the concern, right? If she was forward facing like that is unsafe. But I didn't say she was and I didn't show anything. And so it's just hard. Right. I'm not mad at those people for saying that the people who did it in a respectful way you know right a little, little mad about the people who said i'm a bad parent but um <laughs> right. you know the people who are just trying to educate me i understand but it's still then now every time i film in the car i turn around and make sure her car seat's facing backwards right right and that's one thing but then when it becomes 10 15 20 things that you're checking every time before you film it starts to feel like more of a performance mm -hmm. so how do you like i don't know like for your mental health how do you get past that like i, I mean yes it's like you got to remind yourself they don't know, like, for example, in that moment, you're like, OK, yeah, you guys didn't know the car seat. But how can you let that not affect you and and mm. just be more OK with like you guys just are not going to understand? Because sometimes obviously you're not here on set. I think number one is like I was saying at the beginning, just kind of saying, you know what, if people are going to say something about this, that's fine. You know, mm -hmm. like I can't change everything about me. I can't check everything in the background, you know. Um, otherwise, it's not authentic. You know, it's not me just pulling out the camera. It's me pulling out the camera and then checking to make sure everything's perfect. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so I just I think I've tried to just go away a little bit from feeling like I have to explain everything. Um, but then also, right, if there are things that I just don't I'm not in a headspace to hear comments on, it's OK not to share everything. Right. People don't have to have access to everything about you. Right. And there are things in my life that I keep private, you know. I've been very open about my mental health online. I have bipolar disorder. I've struggled with depression. Um, but I've made the decision to talk about that stuff kind of after the fact. Um, I'm not going to film myself like sobbing, crying in a depressive breakdown. Um, if someone else feels empowered to share that, I think that's great. I personally am not in the headspace where I'm open to receiving criticism and feedback on what I'm like <laughs> in my... Following through. Yes. Right. That's really good to know. And I just ask because personally, I as I'm starting this journey of putting more of myself out there, I'm like, how can I make sure I can already hear that voice in my head? Like, mm. how can I make sure that every like I'm not 
uh, showing an aspect that I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to like censor. Maybe that's a good yeah. word. I'm just trying to censor myself or it overly explain and things like that. So I, I know it's something that I'm going to have to work at, obviously. And I'm just going to take that notes here. Yeah, I think the, the more you can shut that voice off and be authentic, the more people relate. Because if we take away everything that someone could possibly criticize, we're boring. We're boring. What makes us interesting is sometimes the things that are a little polarizing, mm-hmm. right? Otherwise, we're just a freaking blank sheet of paper with no personality. Right. The right. things that like make me weird and that some people would be like, she's annoying. Her voice is this, her voice is that. Those are the things that a lot of people relate to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If, if I took all that away, I'd be pretty freaking boring. Yeah. yeah. And that just makes you, you. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. why would we want to change me to myself? This is literally yeah. 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 me to me. Yeah. Like, why would you want to change for others to be liked? I'm like, but you want others to just love you for who you are. Okay, all right, here it's a loop. It's the mental yeah, loop, yeah. you know? All of this is making me think about, I recently listened to Emma Chamberlain's uh, podcast about uh, social media. Ooh. And she talked about how at first when she would, uh, she she didn't wasn't doing very well with red carpets because it was Getty images and you don't really get to say to take them off or not. And she was like, I was just finding myself always with the Getty images, not doing what I wanted them to do. And I could I would cry for days because I like they would take an action shot like they would intentionally take a picture that yeah. didn't make me look good. And they would use that in other tabloids and I would be crying for days. And she said, as time goes on and it still happens, she's like, unfortunately, like I'll see a TikTok and people are just like, I'm ugly. I'm this. She's like, I. I guess it's made me stronger. And I like now know it doesn't take me days to get over it. It's just like a couple hours or, but she's like, I still feel it because I'm still human. Yeah. But it's, you. I guess she just has like a, a tougher, a thicker skin. So I want, I, I kind of want to know how long do you think it took for you mm. to kind of stop feeling so like it, taking it so personal, especially with body image. Like I think body image was like a couple years. And then I figured that out. And then it was like personality stuff. And then even Kenzie was just saying, like, if you look at my vlogs from like two, three years ago, you can there's such a difference in in how much more just like real I am now Mm -hmm. um, where I don't feel like I'm like putting on this like performance. But I think what you were saying about the Emma Chamberlain podcast really clicked for me in that, like, let yourself feel it, but don't let it change you. I think that's the key. I think the whole idea of like oh, like, they're just haters. Like, just push it aside. It doesn't matter. It's like, yes, that's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. Let yourself feel it. If it hurts, it's okay. Like, we're all human. But don't let it change you. Yeah. Yeah. And and at first she was saying it just felt so raw. And there was moments where she's like, I I don't even want to do this anymore. Like, did you ever have moments where you were like, I just maybe it'd be best if I didn't share my life online? Yes. Only during, like, the body image part. I remember, I think I made a video about it. I was, like, crying in a hotel room because one of my videos went viral and got, like, reposted on a bunch of, like, body shaming sites and so then the comments were just flooded with not just like one sentence criticizing me like paragraphs about like everything that's wrong with me and that and I was not yet in the the headspace that I am now of like now I would just be like okay I'm just not gonna read comments for a few weeks let's let this pass but then I just I was not there yet and it was really hard and I almost I I, that was the closest I think I've been to to walking away specifically because of criticism Mm. wow we're just humans, man. Right. <laughs> and, and that j- just reminds me every time when you see like people tearing, I hate to bring them up again, but the Kardashians, they like r- really come for them. Well, yeah. also they set the standard. We're not going to get into the whole thing. Yeah, yeah But right. they're also still human beings. Like, yeah. I think when people get to that level, right, they, n- people no longer view them as human. Right. Like, right. I think Emma passed into that, that space of people just viewing her as like an entity and not a human. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I think that happened with like Jojo Siwa as well. And mm-hmm. I just last night saw a TikTok on, from her on my For You page about like how she started like using glitter on her face to like hide her hairline because people made fun of her. Oh. And it's like that. Was, she was like 12. Yeah. Like that. And people were vicious. People made like adults made videos like mocking her. I just want to know, seriously, like wh- what I understand thinking that and like moving on. But what really compels you to like be like, let me type this out to make sure that like they read them or do they think that people don't read them? Like, cause if not, then what's the purpose of saying it? I, I yeah. just don't think I've ever in my mind, like understood why. And you could think whatever you want. Yeah. Like, yeah, dude, live your life. But it's so weird to, to me to go out of your way to <gasps> mm-hmm. say something mean or like hurtful or in any way. I don't know. I feel like I have a weird relationship with mean comments or 
I don't know. And obviously, I, I don't don't get a lot of like hate or whatever yet. I'm sure, but um, <laughs> I kind of look at them like roasts. I love. Mm. I mean, I like to roast people, and I like being roasted. So it feels like it's just like an LOL. Yeah. Obviously, if I'm insecure about something they're going to talk about, then I'm like, but. For the most part, I try to look at comments, like mean comments or just things about like whatever. Be like, oh yeah, got me. Got me, girl. That was that was it. That was a good one. Me too. Because I feel like growing up, I took everything personally. Every Mm. comment that was made about my appearance, about who how I acted from everyone, family, friends, everyone, I took that all personally and I went and tried to be we talked about this before, like try to like change myself and try to like, you know, I shut down or whatever. And now I'm like, people are going to say whatever they're going to say. And that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion. And it's You're entitled to your wrong opinion. Exactly. <laughs> and if you say it, well, it's probably funny. And I'll probably laugh and move on. Yeah. Right. And I think that's so powerful, right? Laugh and move on. Yeah. With you posting more, kind of like viewing social media more as like a job now, mm-hmm. how has that been for your mental health with like filming, editing, scheduling, all of that? Because I, I think that is a really hard part of um trying to do social media that that is not often talked about i feel like i'm having a great time it's really fun and i'm figuring out like my creative like process through this i think the hardest thing for me right now because i just hit a thousand subscribers on youtube go subscribe to ryan christina please do as soon as i hit 1k i was number watching like there was no Mm. tomorrow like I every five seconds I was on the app looking, I was refreshing, yep. refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. And I was like so obsessed with it. And then on Instagram, too, I was like, yes, just hit this, just hit this, just hit this. So yeah, I have goals, right? I'm like, OK, I would like to hit this number by, you know, the end of this month or whatever. But it started. To, I was literally like watching the numbers go up as they were oh. going up, which is fine, except it's not when that was the only thing I cared about. Like it was like, right. who cares about the content? Like I'm out here like I got one point. 14k and da 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 like all this stuff which is fine but it started to stifle my creativity because i was like what what can i post that's going to like do well mm. versus like what am i like what do i post like this is you know like my regularly scheduled content i was like okay well like let's think now there's a thousand people and now like i got to get to 2000 i got to get like so i i am currently struggling with that trying to not watch numbers as much yeah which is hard obviously but i think the other thing too that i'm not this isn't new this is not new (laughs) but i do not have a lot of self-discipline and when you do like when this is your job when it literally all depends on you you have to you got to have some self-discipline you need to have like some sort of schedule like some sort of like i don't know like plan yeah because i end up just like posting whenever not no it's not not like youtube but instagram and tiktok is kind of like oh i'm i'm out doing this i'm just gonna post this yeah which kind of takes me out of one the moment Mm. of like being there and two like it's not as good as it could be if i had like sat down planned out my stuff we talk about this all the time (laughs) and then i could post because if you're like living in that moment like okay i know i'm i gotta do this i'm gonna post right now like i have to post right now I know. Well, we talked. We were on a trip in into Las Vegas. Oh the, yeah, the trip that she saw she, that she ran into the influencer. Mm-hmm. Um, and w- we were trying to figure out if she was posting in real time because her Instagram stories are so aesthetically pretty and things like that. It and was so, just so yeah. Like it looks so effortless, but also so planned. But then we realized when we were trying to like run into her and see where <laughs> she was, we're like checking her story, and she's like at live posting so wow. i'm like so i'm asking ryan i'm like are we doing it wrong like should we be living our lives and like posting right in that moment because what i've been doing is i put I, I take i click i take the picture and then later when i so i can stay present i'll come back to it and then upload it but then what happens is you don't post it you, you lose you, like yeah, you, and you lose, lose the, the momentum excitement. You lose yeah. the excitement. so we're trying to find that balance of like yeah what is scheduled but like I don't know. Sierra, how do you do? <laughs> okay, so I've always just like posted in the moment, but I do agree. It takes you out of the moment, right? Because it's one thing to just take a quick video, take a quick photo, and then put the phone back in the pocket and continue being right. present. It's another thing to take it and then sit there and think of the caption, write it, edit it, add some music, add some text. And so I, just a couple 
weeks, months ago, really recently, I started posting, like, like you said, like, later. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, like, I'll take photos, I'll take videos, and then I'll post it later. And at first, I noticed that I, like, I wasn't posting them. I would just take it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the problem. And it just lives in yeah. your camera roll. Yeah. And then I never do anything with it. Right. Um, and so I'm still figuring that out. But what I've started doing is I'll take, like, a bunch of photos and videos, and I won't even try to think about what I'm going to do with it later. Because that's the problem. I take it, and I go, this will be an excellent Instagram story, and then I'm going to repost it on TikTok and da 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 da. Right. I try to literally not even think about what the content is for. Just film it when I feel like it. Ooh. And then that night when I'm laying in bed, which I usually would just scroll TikTok, scroll whatever, I create everything, but I don't post it right then because I'm not going to post it like 11 p.m. Right. And then I post it the next day. Okay, that's nice. I like And I just have to remember to come back to it, like, immediately. Because if not, I feel like once the days go by, they feel so expired. Yes, so do it that night. I think that's the difference. The first time I did that was at Disneyland, um, because we were going on this trip. It was Grace's first time at Disneyland. I knew I wanted to document it, but I didn't want to spend all that time writing captions. Right, right. You're like, take a picture of the parade, and all of a sudden, you're like, in the phone, and then you miss half of it. Yes. Right. So I did, like, the recaps on my phone the day after. And that was great. And it also, I think, sometimes can be good for safety. Um, If I'm somewhere alone with Grace, I am not going to post that while I'm there. Mm, Um, And so then when I get home, then I'll post it. And then she's napping. I've got some time to myself. I'll post what I want to post. See, Peyton, that's how we found you. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's exactly. (laughs) You got to say who the influencer was. Peyton Sarton. That's that's literally how we found her. Yeah. Because she was on the stories like I, and we see, were like we got to protect ourselves from the Ryan and Palomas of you're the right world. you're right I don't know Paloma <laughs> you, and to protect yourself from Paloma because she dragged me she forced me to talk it's to her she, okay you guys to give to be honest it's because that's her like favorite influencer and she was like no what am I gonna say like no I literally grabbed her by the wrist I was like dragging her through the casino quickly because yeah. I could see <laughs> that she was running away I was like this is our one in a lifetime opportunity like we have to go say hi to her at least tell her like how much her content means to you Ryan right yeah. No, no, no. I I was like, go, go. I literally pushed her and was like, I'll meet you at the other end. And I'm like recording them. Like, say hello. <laughs> yeah. And it was. I mean, it was a great experience. She was so nice. Oh, I have absolutely done that at Disneyland for influencers I follow. Like, if I'm at Disneyland and I see someone, like a celebrity or yeah. something at Disneyland, I'm like, okay, on their stories, they were at Splash Mountain two minutes ago. <laughs> I'm at Winnie the Pooh. I can get over there. And then just casually run into them. Oh, so, like, I get God. it. Well, I that's get it. kind of what happened with one of the viewers that saw, because I posted that I was vlogging at Disneyland yeah. on my story. Yeah. And um, that viewer sent me a message from like a, like a reply to that and was like, oh, I'm at Disneyland too. And then like 20 minutes later, so found us. Yeah. At, oh my uh, gosh, Star I Wars didn't Night. know about oh, that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <gasps> I went so back cool. in like my messages and I saw that she had like said like, oh my gosh, I'm here too. And then like 20 minutes later, found us. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I think right when you're posting in, in a public place, when you're posting about that, that's like totally fine. I think that's like, if, if you're posting about it, like that's, that's okay, but like if I'm alone at a park with Grace, oh yeah, that's right. Not posting about it now, <laughs> right? So that's when I started doing like the delayed posting. But I do think it's been better for my mental health, and it's helped me to be more present because I think I sometimes fall into that trap of like, if I didn't post about it, did it really happen? Ooh, yes. Ooh, which that's, is ugh. no, that's huge. People say that, like you know, they're like, if you didn't post about it, did it happen? Did it, or or just like the outfit? Like if you didn't post the outfit, did you actually wear did it or actually, something yeah, like that? Yeah, oh. and I don't like that. It makes me feel compelled to post, like I have to, yeah. rather than I'm sharing this because I want to. And I'm excited about yeah. like you yeah. guys seeing that. Like, And that, that actually happens with us when we're talking about something. We're like, oh, our viewers would totally love to hear this information because it's right. like so not just juicy, but like relatable. Yeah. And like, yeah. oh my gosh. I also feel like in this, I mean, this might be like a personal thing that I'm dealing with, but because I do really, really like the aesthetically pleasing photos and videos and stuff and that's why i do think i really like instagram Mm -hmm. i fall into like i need to show this because this looks like i'm doing something Mm. it looks like i went to the yesterday i went to the mall with my mom and her sister and we went to the nike store and i was like i have to take a picture of the nike store because duh i'm going to nike i'm gonna buy all the stuff in there and everybody needs to know that i'm going in there to buy (laughs) nikes like no one knows no one cares but I really felt like it was like I told them to wait. I was like, hold on. I need to go and take a picture of night. Ni- it, it was so <laughs> ridiculous. And I was thinking about that. But like that was great content. I was like, look at Ryan shopping. <laughs> she got Converse. I She's did. Oh, my God. You guys, I did get Converse. And they're so cute. Cute. They're what color? so cute. They're white. They're Ooh. all white, but they're like kind of platform. Cute. And like canvas, which like I knew usually don't wear like tall shoes because I'm already tall. But like I was like, I'm stopping on bitches these days. Let's go. <laughs> like- <laughs> I love it. Yeah. 
But yes, I think I fall into that trap of like, I'm doing something exciting. I have to post about it or I have to vlog. And I started, re- and I, I think that makes sense, right? You, you want to post about the highlights, the most exciting right. things you're doing. But for a while, I think a couple of years ago, it was like, I didn't do fun things off camera because if I was doing something fun, I was going to film it or, mm. right, or vlog it or make an Instagram story. Like some sort of content is coming out of this. And so I've started intentionally not filming, posting on some really fun activities we're doing. Like we went to San Francisco and I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to vlog. And I, we took a couple photos. I ended up posting like a photo dump at the end. And that was great. But it allowed me to feel like not everything I do has to be for content, you know? Yeah. And I, I, it's hard, right? Because you're like, well, I'm going to San Francisco. This is freaking fun. I want to show it. Yeah. But I think I've tried to say, I'm allowed to do fun things just for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I'm such on a micro, micro level. But since I'm trying to like really do stuff that's food based, I obviously eat like many times during the day, multiple times where I've now f- have my like mom, my dad and my boyfriend being like, are you going to shoot that? Are you going to? And I'm like, and I'm like, no, it's okay. like we're at a fancy. We were at like Din Tai Fung. And my mom was like, oh, my God, stop. Like, you need to shoot your it's so, so sweet. So precious. Like, I love her for that. And I was like, no, mom, like, it's OK. Like, she was like, but Paloma, you need, and I was like, but sometimes I want, and I I was like, and I need to establish that I'm not recording every meal because I got to a point where every single meal I was recording myself True. And that y- y- Ryan's <laughs> Ryan <out>. knows. <laughs> <laughs> We're at lunch. It's it's her, me, and the video camera. So. Yeah, no, right. And so I just in that moment was like a small step of like, no, mom, I don't need to shoot everything. And like this time, I just want it to be special and just us. And I was like, well, look at me go boundaries. Yeah, yeah. right, 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 right. Do you guys ever feel guilty when you do something that could have been good content and you don't? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, but I think that that's the problem. We we are afraid of that feeling of oh, we should have shot that, and mm-hmm. that's why we shoot so much. Mm. Yeah. You know, like we're always trying to get content because because that'd be such great content. That'd be right. amazing. No. Yeah. And all then you the didn't time. shoot, and you're like, I can't believe I wasn't shooting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I think everyone, a lot of people, not everyone, but a lot of people feel that way who aren't even you know trying to be influencers. People who they just it's this feeling like oh, I'm doing something fun. I should share it. I should show it. Ugh. I didn't even get a photo. I didn't even get a video. Right. But like, if you didn't, that means you were present in the moment and yeah. you, right. you were usually having so much fun that you didn't think to take it out. Yeah. Which is great for your mental health. It is. <laughs> yeah. You guys, I just went to the theater and I was went to go see Moulin Rouge and I was like, we were like running, running late. And I was like, you know, you got to get the pic with the playbill and yep. the stage. And right. I was like, I'm, I would remember like rushing and I was like, I'm not going to get that picture. Did I, And I was like, wait a minute, girl, relax. Like, it, you don't need to get that picture. But and I, I mean, I did arrive. I did get the picture. <laughs> <laughs> she did, in fact, get the picture. But in that moment, I was like, "This was not necessary." Like, Is it the as, one where you're holding it in yeah, front of the stage, holding the yep, playbill in front of, of the course. stage, first time. Yep. And 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 you look around, and everyone's doing the same picture. <laughs> They're holding up the playbill right in front of the stage, right before the show starts. Right. And and I remember being like, "It's okay if you don't make it. Like, it's really not that deep." But yeah. I, did you even see the show though? <laughs> right. If you didn't post the playbill. <laughs> right. I think having Steven has really helped me to stay grounded about that stuff because he's the one who will remind me, you don't need the playbill photo. Like, mm. it's okay. Take it if you want to, but like, it's okay. Like, you don't have to do this. You don't, do you want to do this? You don't have to. It, the world will not end if right. you don't get this photo or film this thing. And it kind of brings me back down to earth where I'm like, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. I'm. It's fine. It's not a big deal. I don't have to make everything content. I can't imagine how hard it would be to be dating someone who is an influencer who is not in that mindset. Like I see these like TikTok couples and stuff who like everything is content. Mm. And it's like, I can imagine if instead of Steven saying that to me, he was like, hurry, we have to get the content. Right. What are we going to do? We're going to lose everything. I, right. I, that would feed into, oh my God, I have to get the content. Yeah. Right. And I think that's why it's so important to Surround yourself with people who kind of bring you back down to earth yeah. of your mom being like, you you will not die if you don't get the playbill photo. Right. Like, that's important. Yeah. yeah. I've honestly I've thought about that. Obviously, as we all know, I'm very single. <laughs> <laughs> and um I thought I was like, would I date an influencer? Like, would mm. I date a content creator? And honestly, I don't know. It's giving athlete a little bit, and I don't really know if I want to like <laughs> date like famous athletes. Like that feels like maybe not my tea. But I'm like, in my head, I'm like, that would make great content. Yeah. If I did date somebody who got it and like knew what was going on, also would avoid me like having to explain stuff because yeah. they would just like get it. But also like, then there's cameras all the time. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, 
is this for the camera? Did you buy me 3,000 roses for the camera? Or did you buy me 2,000 roses because you love me? Yeah. I don't know. And I don't know who to believe. Well, would you still be an influencer while dating this influencer? Mm -hmm. Because there's things that you would do for that person that I'm sure would not be for the content. You know, like, would you be just like right. a person that, but since you understand, maybe it could work out because you guys would have this understanding of this is for shooting and this is just personal time. Mm. I think the ideal is like dating someone who's like adjacent to the industry, yeah. but not an influencer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or dating someone who like isn't at all involved in it, but is like down to be on camera a little bit. Yeah. You know who I think did it like super well is Remy Cruz. Yes. She like... Started dating her boyfriend. She talked about it. So it wasn't like the secret that she had a boyfriend, but she didn't show him. And she waited like a long time for the boyfriend reveal. And I feel like that's so good because I'm sure they were able to like establish a relationship off camera that isn't you bought me this so that it's on camera. Yeah. It's obviously not because I'm not showing you. But then now like he's in her vlogs. Yeah. And, but then also sometimes she'll vlog and be like, oh, Cal doesn't want to be on camera today. And I'm like, good for you. Like, yeah, yeah. Right. Like do that. And Steven does the same thing. Like, Sometimes he's down to be on camera. Sometimes he's not. We respect that. And I think that's like kind of ideal of like, get the relationship, figure things out. Don't vlog the first date or maybe vlog the first date, but don't show them. Yeah. You know, vlog yourself well, getting ready. It's so funny because I don't know if you listened to this episode of Pretty Basic like years ago when they first started, but like Remy went on a date with some guy and she filmed it and they went to Disneyland. It was yes. a whole thing. And he like used her. <gasps> he like totally used That's her. where their whole content baby content, content, baby came, content right? Yeah. Because no. he like he like went on a date with her, but I did this whole thing, and then like something happened, and it didn't work out. But then he started making content after everybody started following him on Instagram and everything. Crazy! Isn't that like so yucky? So <laughs> yeah, that is so yeah, ugly. It's so oh ugly. Oh my gosh, I don't like that at all. Right. Yeah. So the, also, no, to avoid that too, because it's not like he didn't know who she was and no. like yeah. all this stuff. Like he had a yeah, he had a reason. If you're an influencer, you have to find someone who respects that and doesn't like make fun of you. Because I think. It's obviously, it's kind of fun to shit on influencers. And like, I get it. Influencers in the wild, hilarious. Hysterical. Right. But also, like, <laughs> that's your job. Mm -hmm. or, if, yeah. or you're trying to make it your job. You're trying to make it. You're putting, it's your passion. You're putting time into it. Yeah. If you're, and filming in public is a little embarrassing. The last thing you need is someone being like, oh, look at you. Taking uh, Instagram photos. Right. <laughs> you're like, babes, I already feel insecure about it. Don't Trust me, don't right. add to it. <laughs> it. It like, it feels so good when like Steven hypes me up while he's like taking pictures Aww. in public because like I know it makes him feel awkward too but he'll be like yes oh my god you can like you're like, you got this it's so good oh so beautiful and I'm like Aww. okay like yeah this this is not so embarrassing yeah Aww. and I can't imagine how hard it is when someone's like this is so cringy and this and, and that me to them I'm so sorry that I'm making money off this Instagram post and you post and you don't get anything <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I'm so sorry well and also I think like, it's it's just disrespectful. You wouldn't yeah. be that way about their job, even if you think it's stupid and boring. Yeah. I know. Right. <laughs> Honestly, and, and I l just live this now, again, trying to shoot at Disneyland. I was like, Paloma, you can't be shy about it because there's, mm. obviously, there's thousands of people and I'm like, nobody cares about what you're doing. Just record yourself. Who cares? And I remember telling Ryan after I shot my first the first bit of where I was eating and I was like girl I was shaking like I was just so stressed and not, not only was I shooting around other people but I had my boyfriend and Ryan there and like I have them watching not that I've they've never seen me do any sort of vlogging before but it's just like you have like I'm like an audience wanna, yeah, like, a I'm live like, audience yeah and a live audience and I'm like I don't want to let you guys down or like look dumb and then there I am spilling food every five seconds <laughs> and and it's just but I feel so safe and like comfortable around them but even then like you still have that like piece of like oh my gosh am I being embarrassing am I being embarrassing and you're just like in public so yeah. just hype your friends up me and yeah. my room vlogging I'm like I'm about to vlog everyone don't listen to me go in your room shut <laughs> yeah, the door headphones shut on shut up. Yeah. Yeah, vlogging yeah, yeah, don't yeah, yeah. listen <laughs> every time <laughs> Okay, do you guys have a social media that you feel like does not negatively affect your mental health? Like a, a social media platform that you're like, I go on this and I feel good. TikTok. TikTok. I was going to say the same. Yeah. I don't know what it is about TikTok. I, I go on there. I laugh. It's because it's so real and it shows like, honestly, like the silliest things. Yeah, like, it's yeah. like just girls dumb are, stuff. Yeah, girls are just like in their big t-shirt and like telling with their bun on the top, like, okay, so this crazy thing happened to me today. Mm -hmm. And it's not like filtered. Or and I think the anywhere. algorithm is so specific too. I don't see content that I wouldn't like. That you like. don't want to see. Yeah, yeah. totally. Because I'm sure there is stuff on TikTok that's like not body positive, that's like really 
like negative. You're so that's, right. I yeah, think, I'm sure it's there. <laughs> you're so right. I just don't see it. You're so right. Though. But on Instagram, I, I see don't it. see that kind of stuff. How do you guys feel like social media as a whole impacts your mental health? Like not even necessarily being the content creator, but being the content consumer. If I can regulate it, like social media used to have an impact in a negative way when I was just following like a lot of people that I don't think were like my curated for you. So once I started following who I actually wanted to follow and made me feel good, like accounts that actually did make me feel good, I did have a positive. And now my feed is, or at least on Instagram and stuff like that, only things that I want to see. So I don't leave feeling like ugh about it. I don't know. I feel good now when I check social mm. media. That's so good. Yeah. Just from removing like certain people. It's so funny because I follow like a, a bunch of different people, you know, influencers and like celebrities or whatever. But my issues don't lie with like seeing like negative things or like feeling bad about myself. It's with like people in real life that mm. I struggle with, mm. like seeing stuff with like people that I know or used to know and all that stuff like that stuff that affects me. Maybe yeah. unfollow. No, I know. <laughs> but it's even people that I care about. And too, and I'm like, wait, you guys, how do we? How do we make unfollows not feel so personal? Because I do have oh friends God, from like, because like you're saying right now, people you used to know, and I'm sure that you're not not dying to consume their content anymore, yeah. but I don't want to unfollow them because then it feels like I'm no longer yeah. your friend and it's like being mean. I have so many people muted because I'm like, oh. I cannot unfollow you because I don't want to hurt your feelings or you to feel like being I don't mute. like you. I just don't, I'm not interested in what you're posting. Yeah. <laughs> and Amen. so I, I have so many people muted like people from high school I'm like I don't need to but then maybe I should just unfollow them but do you know how awkward it is to run into someone in person that you unfollowed I a couple times I've met influencers other influencers at like a convention followed them and then a couple months go by and they post something that I'm like oh yikes no. uh, yeah not 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 endorsing that and then I run into them they didn't bring it up they didn't. and no 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 they never bring it up oh but then they'll mention something about like my content and I'm like you follow me but I don't follow you and right. that was purposeful <laughs> <laughs> and how does that change when it's someone you actually like know in your personal life tragic especially if they bring up the fact that oh my god you unfollowed me on Instagram someone's done that to you yes and what do you say I literally was like oh my gosh uh, I, I honestly probably a you probably play dumb like yeah. oh my god I didn't even know like sorry uh, uh, like my Instagram uh, uh, be acting up there's a, I got <laughs> hacked <laughs> Well, also, like, what's the answer they're looking for? I I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I did. I have. Like, yeah, you shared that infographic that I thought was, like, really, really bad and harmful. <laughs> and so I, I just decided to unfollow you. But, yeah, how's your family? Right, right. Right, right. And it's just looking for conflict, it feels like. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, so what? We just have to mute? We can't unfollow? I, I also find it odd when people, like, announce that they're unfollowing you. Don't uh, you? Oh, yes. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yes. Like, if they're like, I'm unfollowing you because this, that, and the third, right? Yeah, it's like. Just, just do just it. Just do it. Or the people going, hey, guys, so I'm going to be cleaning through my fo uh, following <laughs> followers. If I remove you, it's not personal. I'm like, well, now it feels personal. Now it, it does personal. feel personal. But it's not personal. Do you guys, I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, I think sometimes, obviously, it can be right. If like right. something happens and I'm like, I don't want to follow you anymore. We are not friends. I don't like you or whatever. That's personal. That's fine. Right. But like, if you just seeing something that you don't want to see or someone you really don't care about, like, again, yeah. like we were saying, people from high school, like, I haven't talked to you. I'm not gonna talk to you. Right. I don't care about your life and not in the non mean and not way, in a but mean like way. it just, yeah. Like, yeah. just don't. See, part of me is like, yeah, let's normalize unfollowing people. And then I think about when I see someone that I actually personally do know has unfollowed me. I'm like, what did I do? Right. What did I post that like made them not like me anymore? <laughs> so right. it's very easy when you're the one being uh doing the unfollowing right normalize unfollowing people like right. it doesn't matter and then but like with me i deserve an explanation yeah i right <laughs> everyone else should be cool with it except i deserve an explanation yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> we gotta solve this ladies <laughs> but i guess it's muting that's smart yeah, yeah just muting unless you really are like i don't even care where it's not happening unfollow just like it doesn't matter well something that i've run into too as my platform has grown is uh publicly following someone a lot of people view as an endorsement of them, their beliefs, and who they are. Mm. Um, and so I would follow people who I liked their content. I didn't know anything about, like, their political beliefs, their personal beliefs. And then all of a sudden, I'm getting DMs of, like, how could you follow this person? And then I look into it, and I'm like, oh, my God, I had I had no idea. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that's also happened a lot with, like, meeting influencers. You know, meeting someone at a convention. It's very normal to be like, oh, what's your Instagram? Like, let me follow you. I'm not sitting there vetting 
everything that they've ever posted. Right. Um, something happened a while back where there was a huge, huge scandal with a mom influencer who I had met at uh, Clamor a few years earlier. Um, I mean, huge, horrible what she did. Just awful, awful, awful. But I'm getting messages from people being like, how could you follow this person? Oh, my gosh. How could you stand for this? <laughs> I had no idea <laughs> yeah. what was going on. Right. And then I look into it and I'm like, oh, my gosh, un- unfollow. Right. Yeah. But just by following that person, I didn't post anything in their support. I didn't know what was going on. Following that person is an endorsement. Yeah. yeah. People are assuming that that's that's the kind of content you like to consume and you support that. And you that. support that. Right. Yeah. 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 So I think that's something I've had to be more careful with is like, okay, if anyone I'm following, people could view as like me endorsing who they are, which is like a lot of pressure. It is a lot of pressure, especially like we've been on, not YouTube, we've been on Instagram. I mean, what, 2012 is when Instagram came out? Yep. yep. I was on, just like you were saying, like I was like Mm -hmm. on there immediately, like very, very quickly. And I was just following literally anyone. Same. All people. I did didn't matter. I followed back anyone who followed Anybody. me. Yep. Anyone. Yep. Anyone. And then after, right, when Instagram started becoming like, I don't even know what the word mainstream. is. Influencery. <laughs> Influencery, yeah. Mainstream. And then everybody started getting it. You kind of be like, oh. Also, wait. Okay, this is like not relevant. But remember when you like checked your following and their followers and like you always had to have more followers than you did following? <laughs> did you guys ever have those unfollowing apps that would yes. like show you who unfollowed you? Yes. I had those. Yes. I had those. And I would like, I would check it every like oh, that, week or so. That shit was personal. I yes. honestly don't even think it was because like the follower count that I had him. I wanted to make sure that if you unfollowed me, then I I'm don't unfollowing I'm following you. you too because okay. Oh, and, and I was I was confronting <laughs> I said, I said, you were the person going up to pee. Yeah, oh, like, so, so I heard happened? you unfollowed me. <laughs> so what happened? All right, the cat's out of the bag. It was Ryan. He it was that name. And then since then, couldn't look back. Yeah. <laughs> the high school, high school vibes. But I just, I mean, I, it was just like, because it felt, it was like a social status thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the girl at your high school who had like a thousand followers on Instagram. Yes, it's it was like, like, she was, she was like, the shit. She was the influencer without like being like even being like an influencer. There was a girl at my high school who had a YouTube channel that had 50,000 subscribers. And when I tell you she was a celebrity. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She I want to know how it is being in high school with Instagram and how important it is to like your status oh and like tea. being popular or not, because. I was talking to um, my brother's girlfriend. I was like, I don't think that I'd be in a good m- like mental health, like m- uh, a positive uh, mental space if I was in high school during Instagram. Because what if like the followers weren't doing the thing? Like all of that, like it was kind of like Facebook, right? Where it's yeah. like you saw the top five that you kind of got some ranking there. And then if Instagram was going, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have five followers. Nobody likes me. And just like, yeah, that's it's important. It's status, I feel now. Yeah. I see a lot of high schoolers now pulling away from it. I say a lot. My brother and his girlfriend both have no, no social media. That, that's happening too. My yeah. brother. They've, they've, con- yeah. they've confirmed that, that like, that's happening not, too. Yeah. Because he, he still has like his public profile, but he's deleted the app and he maybe posts like twice a year. Right. And like, that's it. And like, he doesn't go on it. He doesn't think about it. And I'm like, that's pretty freaking cool. Like, good, yeah. for, good yeah. for you. Yeah. Oh, you know what he's really into that I've been hearing a ton about? It's like the anti-social media. It's called Be Real. Have you guys heard about this? No. No. So it's an app and it, I don't have it. Maybe we should all get it. <laughs> okay. It's tell me more. It's an app that um, it sends out. You don't like post on it normally. It's not like Instagram. Once a day at a random time, it sends out a notification to everyone at the same time. And you have like, I think 15 minutes or like 30 minutes or something to like take a photo of whatever you're doing. No editing. Can't upload anything. It's just directly in the app. And then um, everyone that you're like friends with, because you have to be mutual friends. You can't like, I think so. I think you can't like just follow, like follow people. Like, right. Maybe you can. I don't know. Um, but like then you just see what everyone was doing at that exact time of the day. I love that. And it feels definitely more real rather than like. Uh, well, I have some questions. Yeah. <laughs> so you you take a picture of what like whatever I guess you want to take a picture of and you have a time frame. Uh huh. And then that's it. Yep. And then you get can to you follow. like comment. No idea. I don't have it. <laughs> we should get it and find out we what should the get tea. It. Yeah. Because I think that the idea of that, right, is like you're still sharing a highlight your of your day, something that's going on, but you're not constantly doing that thing where you're like, oh, I should make content of this. I mm-hmm. should film this. I should do this. It's the timer that just Be- lets you know. Yes. Because it doesn't, if if you go out and you're like, oh man, we should have filmed that. It's like, well, you only get to post when it tells you to post. Mm. Mm. That's kind of cool though. Yeah. I first heard about it when we were at Clamor because um, oh. our friend Tyler has it. 
And he oh. was saying he is friends on Be Real with like a couple like industry people involved in YouTube. So like big like CEOs and stuff of like some of these companies and platforms. And seeing their Be Real notifications is very grounding because you think that they're doing all these amazing things. But most of the time it's like them with their dog. Right. right. And it's like grounding. It's like, oh, they're humans. This like big deal hotshot person is just like hiking Chilling. with his dog. And I feel like that's kind of cool. No, it is kind of cool. Us being like, oh my gosh, not them just hiking. We're, they're totally human, but <laughs> yeah. it's just like, it blows our mind yeah. to find out what people are actually doing. Yeah. So maybe we should, should we all download Be Real? I think we I'm should. Like, we, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it I right now. Okay, okay, okay. It. It's number one in social networking. Yeah, it's above WhatsApp, Facebook, Messenger, Discord, all this stuff. It's like popping off right now. Okay. But when things start to pop off, Things start to change. Yes. So, so I, do you think that like this is going to be different? I feel like <laughs> me explaining every way it could possibly go. I was going to say, I feel like it could go one of three ways. Number one, it stays the same. Number two, it like blows up and uh, like everything changes. Mm -hmm. Or number three, it like fizzles out. Like, do you guys remember? What was that like chat room app that everyone? Kick? No, no, no. It was oh. like video chats or not video. It was audio. Do you guys remember oh, what it was? Oh, oh, I do remember that one. It was orange, huh? Yes. Oh, oh my God, God. what is it? Um, everyone, like everyone in the YouTube industry was talking about it too because like all of these like big creators I were on it. I know, it I know called? exactly what it is. Uvu? Ovu? No. No, no, that was the video. Oh. That was where, no, 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 no. That's okay, like but chat I do, roulette. But I, <laughs> you do remember it. <laughs> You're right. I do, I totally remember <laughs> and it. And then Twitter tried to like copy it by making like audio rooms and it didn't super take oh off. Oh my gosh, it's like contacts using Be Real and it's like a zillion people. Me, am I late to the party? <laughs> <laughs> You have contacts and be real. Yeah, it says contacts using be real. Like I have more than like twenty people here. Oh my gosh, Jaden. Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jaden. So our our production assistant, Jaden, is the one who told us about it. And but she's very with it. She's I'm, nineteen. I'm only yeah, adding. She knows I'm only what adding Jaden and she knows moving. Yeah. Oh my god, there's so many. I'm telling you. I hope no one's taken Schultz yet. Oh, that's another thing with being an influencer is whenever there's a new social media app, and even if I don't want to use it, I have to go on and reserve my name. Otherwise, someone will pretend to be me, oh. which has happened. A lot of people make like fake Tinders for me, which is very awkward. Not Tinder. I know. Like I'll, I'll get messages of people being like, hey, so I you like, so you want Tinder? And I'm like, I am definitely not on Tinder. Steven's like, saw who you on where? Yeah. Who, who on what? <laughs> but then people have made fake ones for Steven too. Isn't that weird? That, yeah. What do you get out of that? Oh my god! I have oh my gosh. so many contacts. All of, a sudden, that's, all of a sudden, the countdown just started. You guys, I have <gasps> two minutes. Take a picture. Take a picture. Go, take a picture. Go, go, wait, go. wait. <laughs> oh my oh god! My god. Okay. Not that being your first Does that one. Have to be mine too. <gasps> Click on. Okay, wait, I want to take my very first. Be real. Uh, uh, oh my wait, god! Uh, my friends only. Oh, I have none. It's ah. okay. Send. Okay, I've got a minute and fifty seconds. Okay. P, can you lean? Ah, one, two, three. My first be I real. I want to do it. Wait, wait. My I don't friends know. Actually, discovery. I don't know how this is going to work because I'm in the middle. Oh my god, so. it's showing my address. How do I take that off? <gasps> oh, my. delete. Oh hell no. Oh my gosh. Hold Location. On. I'm just going to take a picture. Why is that like the default? Okay, post my address. Oh yeah, you need to fix that because it's. I'm doing that. I'm literally doing that right now. Oh, so you can have a public account. Okay, I'm going to make my my account public. You can go follow me on Be Real. It's at Schultzy. <laughs> me too. Mine's at Ryan Christina. Go follow me. I'm Paloma Malfavon. Same thing as Instagram. Wait, um, what is this? How do I roast? Oh, crap. It shows both sides of the camera. <laughs> How do you turn that yes. off? That's my foot. I only have one minute. Oh, my God. I'm going to okay. be on wiki feet. <laughs> it's literally just my foot because I was, oh, gosh. Uh, can I read you it? I have no can idea. I oh, my God. I, I get simply zero, don't know. Wait, zero to ten friends retake. Okay, Why send. is it locked on retake oh my options? God. I need to turn off this. I need to, like. Wait, I have to read. Your friends haven't posted. I don't have any friends. I have to add 10 more friends to add get friends. retake. Oh, oh, okay. Wait, look at this discovery. Who are these add. random people? Okay, my first photo Weird. is a cute selfie of us and then my thumb covering half the screen and then my foot. So, okay, very good, very good. Um, What's your name? Content. Schultz. Add Who friends. Are you? Schultz. This oh is God. interesting, y'all. A bunch of influencers that I have their contact for yeah. have accounts with like secret names, like not their name. So I they have like private people that. accounts. That's cool. Right, be real. There's my brother. Okay, well, I need 10 friends. Bethany. I need 10 friends so I can retake my foot pic. Do I have 10? Do I have 10? I'm trying to oh add my, my I don't No, know. they have to add me back. So I I'm it's just gonna be my foot pick. Okay. Well, um, add us on Be Real. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation about social media, content creation, mental health, and how all of those things intersect. 
Uh, make sure to give us a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or YouTube. And you can watch us on Spotify now. Yes. Oh my God, yes. The, the video version is now on Spotify as well. So you very well may be watching this on Spotify. On Spotify. I didn't even know that was a thing. Send screenshots. I want to see. Yeah. Okay, so my friend actually said that she tried to screenshot it to show me and she said it just went blank. Or black, um, black screen. So I don't know if you can do that. Maybe you can record maybe you the can screen. screen record. I don't yeah, know. I don't but know. she know. tried screenshotting and it didn't work. So well, interesting. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Guys.